you recently contributed to a study following folks who'd been following a carnivore diet for, for over six months. Can you share with us, you know, some of the characteristics of the group or, or some of those common goals of why these individuals were pursuing that diet? Yeah, this was, this was such a fun project. So I have my doctorate in nutrition. I'm a registered dietitian and the carnivore diet in the most blunt sense is opposite to like everything we <laughs> recommend ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very different. And um, there's a lot of people that are following it. And whenever there's something where a lot of people are following it, it starts to, to pique your interest. And then what was so unique about it is people were also reporting a lot of health-related benefits. Again, all self-report, things you see on social media and, yep. and conversations with people like MDs that promote it, like, like Dr. Dr. Baker and otherwise. And so then it's like, okay, we need to start the research process in this population. See what's we going need on to here. Better, we need to better understand this. So this was a collaboration between um, myself down at Pennington Biomedical, some of the researchers at Harvard, Belinda Lenners, and uh, Dr. David Ludwig, and then also um, help from those carnivore community individuals like Dr. Baker, um, Travis Statham, we talk, talked with quite a bit too, and uh, to just help get access and understanding to that community and, you know, how they were really utilizing the diet. And so this was all survey self-report data, but it, it's kind of, the study was based to be the, the first representation of what are these people eating and what benefits do they think they're getting out of it? And then put that in a, a research, you know, scientific approach method to better characterize it as opposed to just having a bunch of articles on Reddit and otherwise, you know, yeah. you know talk, talking about the study. So it was a, a really awesome report. And, and what we showed is that a large majority of the, uh, of the people were following this diet. They typically ate red meat based products. They very rarely ate fruits and vegetables, you know, which is standard recommendations for that carnivore diet. And I, I will be a little cautious when I say the term recommendations, uh, sure. yeah. that, 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 those aren't recommendations coming from organizations. Those are just standard um, profiles for the diet, but most people reported generally positive improvements in a lot of their medical measures. Um, similar to what I mentioned with Verda, people reported coming off diabetes or other medications after consuming this diet. And these were all people that did it for at least six months. So it was, it was people, what we would consider for a diet. I mean, relatively long-term, it moves yeah. more towards a pattern of eating than what we would typically consider like a short-term diet to reach a specific goal. So it was just really interesting to see that um, there were some side effects related to it. We had some GI items and otherwise, but generally they were very low. One of the items that I thought was really cool is we didn't see self-reported side effects of the diet that would be consistent with micronutrient deficiencies. So, yeah. um, you know, that's one of the issues with, with this diet is it's, it's very linear, right? It's got kind of a, a, a niche select group of foods that it eats and it's, it's kind of just meats, right? Like if, if you, you categorize the diet in one word, it's meats. Yeah. So you miss out on all these other micronutrients and phytonutrients that's are just split throughout the rest of the diet. And what effect does that have? We have, we have no idea from my personal perspective. I'm a big, like, I like phytonutrients, man. We don't, we don't measure them a lot. I think, I think they play a big role in health long-term. Sure. So it's, it's hard to get that impact, but, but on this diet, you know, they, they don't have those, but we also didn't see the items that I kind of expected to see, which would be skin dermatitis related issues related to poor amounts of micronutrients. And, yeah. and we did like we vitamin didn't C, right? That. Yeah. You know, and so we didn't see that. Uh, we don't exactly know why. And, and certainly yeah. this is all self-report data, right? So there's a hundred percent, there's, there's a high possibility. I don't know why I said hundred percent. There's a high possibility that if all of these individuals were studied, the data wouldn't look exactly the same as self-report data, right? We know that that's an inherent issue with self-report data. For sure. And a, a few things jump out at me anytime we look at some of these fad diets. It's always the kind of trickle down effects that people aren't even always aware of, of following a certain diet. And, you know, the first one's just people being inherently busy. And so these simple heuristics of, that make a diet super simple are really appealing. But as a side effect of that, it's just the reduction of ultra processed food when someone goes on a diet just plummets right all of a sudden 
the 60% of their diet or 50% of their diet that was junk food goes away. Um, so I don't know if you want to comment on that, just first of all, before we touch on a few other parts of it, but that's, I mean, it's a pretty powerful thing, isn't it? When we remove sort of the really calorically dense nutrient poor foods that are causing a lot of the, you know, dysglycemias and, and, and caloric excess and waking. I love that you brought those two items up, the simple choices, right? The simple heuristics. I think just from a personal dietetic standpoint, when I do one-on-one counseling, there's so many food choices throughout the day, right? Yeah. Nonstop. You're bombarded with advertisements and food around you all the time. And every time you see something like that, you are making a decision and it does get really difficult if you don't have certain on off switches in your mind to be, to be able to kind of self-regulate because everything we know about the body's regulation internally subconscious is telling you to eat that thing, Mm. whether whether that's because you lost weight and now you're trying to to gain, you know, that weight back, your body just wants it back or, or. Yeah. Or if it's from the unbelievably powerful marketing and advertising strategies that are out there, it is insane. It is insane how good companies are at getting you to buy, click, or eat the item they want you to. And that's, that's why those heuristics I think are so powerful because it helps combat that uh, difficult food environment. And what's the downstream effect? It's the next thing you mentioned, which is the ultra processed foods, right? Yeah. And, and keeping those down. And, and those have other issues where it's low nutrients, high calories. And then they're, they're also specifically designed to hit your tastes and make you want more and more and more. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable the way these, these foods are manufactured and the advertising is done. It is so hard for so many people to maintain a healthy body weight just because of that scenario. And it's interesting, even when we go away for, for trips with Canada basketball and we go to some countries that maybe don't have the most diverse cuisine, you know, and you have to repeat the same meals over and over again, you know, the staff, we don't mind because you're still getting your nutrients and stuff, but it's very much the same taste. And it's amazing how getting the players to keep eating enough becomes a real challenge because they just become sort of bored with the selections. Um, And so you can see that being part of some of these simple rules of you're repeating kind of similar foods. And so, um, but one of the areas that I feel gets missed is the, we, we, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs are different than a steak when it comes to nutrient quality, right? When we look at even saturated fat intake, I mean, it's it's the processed foods, it's the hot dogs and the hamburgers that are primarily contributing. So can you touch on, you know, the difference between, like, you know, a steak versus what we're going to get in a hamburger or a sausage? And because those things still seem to get a little conflated, even amongst when some the expert dietitians or doctors are, are, are informing people. Sure. So, and I think the part of that, issue comes from macronutrient profile wise, the two items you mentioned can look very similar, Mm -hmm. right? So when we measure things in food, that's primarily what we measure macronutrients. So then when we judge food, that's what, that's what we look at. Even if you look at micronutrients, right? You have fortified food items and otherwise that can look very similar. So let's just, let's just say a scenario where you have these, um, a steak and a hot dog and you've matched the macronutrient profile, you've come close enough on the micronutrient profile. People don't fortify hot dogs, but let's just run with it. For example. Okay. <laughs> could be, could um, be an area. <laughs> <laughs> so then how in the world would those things be different on your body? You remember what I said about those phytochemicals? And I'm like, hey man, I think these have a, a major role and there's evidence to support that. Um, I think there's the same thing in uh, animal products. And these are called zoochemicals. And it's, it's chemicals. Uh, I like to call them nutrients. They're not technically nutrients because you don't need them to live, mm-hmm. but man, phytochemicals and, and zoochemicals sound so much worse than phytonutrients and zoonutrients. Right. So yeah, I'll yeah. just, I'll call them <laughs> phytonutrients and zoonutrients, Fair enough. but they're, they're molecules, they're components to food that we don't measure that in some cases have been shown to have very positive effects on human physiology. Uh, the phytochemicals uh, often deal with uh, improved heart health and some other biomarkers. The zoochemicals, um, a great example is creatine, right? And we know the positive effect that has on sports performance. And so beyond that, there's um, certain types of fats, certain lipids, right? Certain proteins that have unique independent effects, beyond just their macronutrient energy content. And identifying those is an area that 
uh, I mean, I, I think we're only hitting the tip of the iceberg on some of these items. Um, a comparison in milk is milk-based protein. And this has been shown to help with uh, bone mineral density in combination with calcium. But if it's not calcium, it's just, it's just protein in milk, right? If you look at macronutrients, the same as, you know, any other protein, but it has a unique independent effect. And so that's what's so intriguing to me about this difference between your description of kind of like that ultra processed food item and a macronutrient micronutrient product that looks really similar uh, can still long term, I think, have a very different effect on the body. Would you notice anything over the course of a week? I doubt it. A month? I doubt it. A year? I, I'd probably doubt it. But this is we don't live for a year, right? we we live for substantially longer average age is pushing 80 you know what i mean so yeah. i think there's a huge difference when you talk about long term effects yeah and, and again it might start to sound like recommending the carnivore diet but i'm just more fascinated with exploring all these kind of nuances that come as a result of it and like you said something that's going polar opposite to the recommendations and yet not killing people so what's going on here or people are actually improving there's going to be some mechanisms at play and and the last one i'd like to touch on is just the difference between vegetables and fruit because now we see a lot of the carnivores saying well actually what we'll do is we're going to include a lot of fruit so all of a sudden we're getting more fiber we're getting more antioxidants and polyphenols and etc but we're not necessarily getting as many vegetables so i'm sure like you said, self-reported. I mean, I'm sure these people are eating more vegetable here and there that doesn't get to uh, make it on the, on the list, but, you know, and, and again, not to pit well, certain foods, vegetables versus fruits, but could you describe some of the benefits that one might get from fruits that are similar to what we might get from vegetables? I'll first say that I'm, I'm not the most in tune with those intricate changes that are happening within the carnivore diet community and, and, and changes that sure. are happening. I will say there's an unfortunate and unnecessary fear and demonization of some vegetable products um, due to things like anti-nutrients and otherwise. So I want to make sure I first just start with, um, I don't believe that concern is real. Yeah. That is um, conflated the lectins information. and phytates and things like so, that. So yeah, I just want to make sure from my perspective, I portray that I do not think there's any reason to fear vegetable based products. First. Yeah, and, for, and also <laughs> to be clear here, for all of our athletes, we're, we're most of the time we're needing to get a significant amount of carbohydrate in, and so we're using a lot of whole grains and everything else. So we'll definitely put the disclaimers up for folks. <laughs> um, but I, on top of that, you know, the cool thing about fruits is uh, a lot of it comes from the color, right? They're so colorful, and this this is all due to different essential phytonutrients that are contained in there. And you have high amounts of antioxidants. And some of them function in different ways, and. And so I, I think that's maybe where some of those uh, phytonutrient components of fruits may have unique benefits compared to some of the more bland looking straight green vegetables. Um, and certainly, I mean, they, they, they taste better, right? They got yeah, they have, they have more sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs>